In Elden Ring, you'll find yourself tackling bosses and hordes of enemies most of the time. The game's combat mechanics are complex enough to keep things interesting, but should also make it easy enough to determine which tools you should bring to the battlefields. If you want to know which weapon you should use for any situation, always maximize your damage output against every single enemy, well, this video is for you. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Oriam and in this guide I will explain all physical damage types in Elden Ring. I'll cover standard, strike, slash and pierce damage, compare their effectiveness on the battlefield and also show you how to get the best out of every single one of them, so let's get right to it. Basically, there are two major damage types in Elden Ring. Physical damage for all the melee attacks with your weapons, and then we also have elemental damage. If you want me to make a video for this one as well, let me know in the comments and also hit that like button. But today we're gonna break down all physical damage which you can divide into four categories. Standard damage, strike damage, slash damage, and also pierce damage. First off, we have strike damage. Blunt weapons like hammers, flails, maces, warhammers, colossal weapons, staves and shields, and even the whip can do strike damage, which is very effective against armored enemies, like rocky enemies, also the stone imps, which you can find in the catacombs. Just like most physical damage types, this one also comes with weakness. It is pretty bad to use against scaly creatures. For example, dragons, they are pretty difficult to take down with a blunt weapon. Next up, we have slash damage. Most daggers, katanas, curved swords, reapers, and even fists come with built-in slash damage. Sometimes they also have the blood loss buildup, which I think is a very nice passive ability on the weapon, because if you can land attacks on the same enemy consecutively in a short time, boy oh boy, you can hit like a truck with some slashes, deal so much damage. This physical damage type is pretty much the opposite from strike damage. It will deal a lot of damage against unarmored enemies, light armored enemies, and also fleshy creatures. So basically, if you see exposed body parts, missing armor, or let's say ankles and knees that are unprotected, you want to use a slash damage weapon because you'll be able to take them down a lot easier. Because I already said this was kind of the opposite of strike damage, on heavily armored enemies and rocky creatures, the slash damage will be pretty ineffective. Basically, you want to use a hammer to smash a rock, right? You're not going to use your blade, it will simply become dull. Then we also have pierce damage. This is very nice against scaly creatures. If you want to hunt some dragons, I think spears are going to be very nice. Light and medium armored enemies can also be taken down pretty easily with those spears. I mean, you can pierce armor with this. That's why spears are very nice. Of course, the pierce damage doesn't only come on spears, but also halberds, daggers, straight swords, rapiers. Lances, fists, all the pointy things pretty much which you can find in the weapon assortment. These weapon types are not very effective against heavily armored enemies. It is really nice though to have a spear or halberd or lance to use from range. It will be so much more difficult for enemies to get to you. You can just do those lunge attacks, engage and disengage also with rapiers. I think they are very nice. But if you want to have a nice all-rounder which works pretty much in every situation, then you should go with the standard damage. Standard damage sounds pretty standard, right? I mean, it's nothing too special, but this makes it really interesting because you can pretty much use it in every single situation. It doesn't come with strengths against certain armor types, but it doesn't have weaknesses either. And most of the times you will find this damage type on both axes and colossal weapons. Many people love these colossal weapons, and I think if you're two-handing these, it's gonna be interesting to slaughter pretty much everything you come across on the battlefield. So this is pretty much a no-brainer. If you want to just deal with every situation, you want to go with standard. So right now I'm gonna show you these different physical damage types in different situations against light armored enemies, heavily armored enemies, so you can see their effectiveness on the battlefields. For this showcase, I used the Highland Axe as standard weapon, the Mace as Strike, Scimitar for Slash, and also the Partisan Spear as Pierce Damage. As you can see, most of them have like pretty much the same stats. I upgraded some of them to make them look as similar as possible on paper. So let's check them out in action. The first enemies we're gonna fight are the Diggers inside Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel. These guys have a pretty slow attack animation, but can hit pretty hard and are also pretty armored stonish kind of guys, let's say, 
I started with the Highland Axe and also the Partisan. Even though axes or standard damage usually don't come with weaknesses, right here you can see that this guy is only getting tickled by it. Same with the Pierce Partisan weapon. Both of them aren't very interesting to use in this situation. So what you want to do instead is go with Strike Damage. In this situation, I use both a scimitar and a mace, but you can tell that the mace definitely destroys these bad guys and only a couple swings make it so easy to pretty much clear these big cave systems in no time. Our next target is a mad pumpkin head on the Saints Bridge. These guys are pretty easy to dodge, they are pretty dumb, easy to hit them from different angles, but basically you can see that they have exposed body parts without any armor, so what you want to do in this situation is use a sword or something else with slash damage. Hit those weak points, deal a lot of damage, especially with the blood buildup. Of course you can use a standard weapon like an axe or go with a strike or pierce, but this is not going to be as effective as slash damage because this is very effective effective against those unarmored targets with exposed flesh so that will without doubt be the easiest way to take down these kind of targets. Every now and then you will also come across those encampments in the wild with for example Godric soldiers. They don't have the highest armor and in this situation it's actually going to be really nice to use pierce damage because you can basically run to them with torrent, jab that spear into their bodies, take them down pretty easily. This is probably also the reason why knights use lances in the middle ages to just keep that distance from enemies, take them out with a jabbing, do a little bit of jousting let's say, will help you out big time in those encampment situations where you're gonna have to take out multiple targets with reliable hits because if you use weapons like swords you will slash to the left and the right and it's gonna be pretty much RNG to hit your target but with a spear it is no problemo. So as I already said useful against light and medium armored enemies but also scaly creatures and that means dragons. Personally I don't think this is the best weapon to use against them because basically if you just run to their feet and want to land a couple hits well with the spear is always going to be exactly the same damage doesn't have a nice attack animation and you can't really build up that bleed. So if you use a slash weapon even though it's not very effective against dragons you can have those critical hit combos which in my opinion are crucial in taking down these bad boys as quick as possible. If you have absolutely no clue, if you cannot really guess what the armor type of the enemy is and just want to go with one certain type of weapon, just go with the standards. I mean, axes and colossal weapons will be interesting in any situation pretty much. They usually don't have any weaknesses. Of course, they aren't super effective in certain situations either, but they are very nice all-rounders, will allow you to take down most enemies in most situations without a problem. And yeah, most of you guys love those colossal weapons, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for you guys to just play with one certain type of weapon, upgrade it to the maximum, and slaughter your way to the end of the game. This is some pretty useful information, I guess, to take on your adventures. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to hit that like button. That's pretty much everything you need to know about physical damage. If you want me to make a video about the elemental damage as well, let me know in the comments. And of course, if you have other suggestions, they are always very welcome. Guys, a big thanks for watching. I want to wish you an awesome day. Discord is in the description, by the way. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Peace.